All right, so yes, we've got a ton of cyberpunk news to talk about today. A mix of good and bad news in this video. So we've got this one right here. CD Projekt Red used Winnie the Pooh to mark censorship flags for China in cyberpunk 2077. I kid you not. But yeah, on the side of good news, it looks like they're doing some major hiring right now. There's some really fascinating stuff going on as they are actually looking into hiring an open world game designer right here. Uh, and then also they're looking into uh, hiring an encounter designer. Some really cool stuff. We're going to also talk about what they're doing on the side of multiplayer as well. And then we're going to dive into another story today about how there's an investment group going after CD Projekt Red demanding changes right now with the structure of the company. So that's really big news. So let's dive in. Hey everyone, what's happening? Open World Games here. Hope doing good. And let's do this first of all, starting with this weird Winnie the Pooh story right here. This one comes from thegamer.com. Uh, now it goes on to say the following right here. It says uh, the recent uh, source code leak, excuse me, shows that CD Projekt Red used Winnie the Pooh to mark censorship flags for China in Cyberpunk 2077. The leak is now in the public domain and information is slowly trickling out. Now this was revealed by a thread on the gaming leaks and rumors subreddit, which showed a screenshot of the censorship flags. Although many of them are pretty standard and related to things like nudity and gore, the one that raises an eyebrow is the Winnie the Pooh flag related to censorship in China. Furthermore, says this, similar to the glitch video that leaked, it seems that CD Projekt Red had several little jokes whilst making cyberpunk, which they weren't expecting the public to see, including the jab at China here over at its censorship policies. Now, they go into further details about this Winnie the Pooh story and why the Winnie the, the Pooh tag is so significant. They say this, for those of you that aren't aware, the Winnie the Pooh tag is a reference to how the Disney character is banned in China due to the comparisons to President Z. Anything uh, relating to the character has to be completely censored out as seen in games like Kingdom Hearts 3, which had to completely censor him in the marketing for the game. Here it seems like Seed Product Red has mockingly used the tag to reference censorship in China right there. So let me know uh, what you make of this one. Again, they weren't expecting this stuff to make it into the public eye. Uh, this hacker that hacked into CD Projekt Red is once again kind of revealing internal details <laughs> and inner workings uh, uh, that go on with some of these game development studios. It makes me curious to see if things are going to change throughout the game development landscape, if game developers and publishers are, are going to be more careful and cautious uh, about you know what they joke around about in their documents or on their computers and things like that considering that this leak has happened i'm sure it's going to change uh some uh ways that some of these developers and publishers operate now on the good side of things this is really interesting you know if you go over to the job listings for cyberpunk 2077 at the official cd project red uh website you see that they have actually expanded uh their listings here and there's some really fascinating stuff uh, most notably right here, open world designer says uh, to, of course, the company description is right here, but the job description goes on to say this, CD Projekt Red is looking for an open world designer to join our Warsaw team where we're looking for candidates with boundless creativity to fill our game world with believable and exciting content consisting of communities and events that players will encounter. And again, this is specifically related to Cyberpunk 2077 so they are really wanting to actually make this open world feel more alive according to this job description now the daily responsibilities are as followed designing and implementing communities and open world events uh using their tool set maintaining the highest possible quality of open world content and fixing uh reported bugs cooperating with other departments and creating and maintaining documentation so yeah it could be that they are really wanting to once again flesh out this open world uh, and make it into what was promised. At least I hope that's the case because again, in the next couple of years, this game could be something completely new and something completely different that we all really enjoy. That has happened with No Man's Sky. You never know what could happen here. Uh, now, also, this is really interesting. They're looking for an encounter designer, as you can see, for Cyberpunk. It says, we are looking for a talented encounter designer who will join our Warclaw team in creating 
In bouncing encounters within our games, the person will take ownership of delivering memorable combat encounters that thrill and excite players. Now, this was also listed under the cyberpunk job listing. And yeah, it goes on to say the following for what they are looking for for daily responsibilities. It says, design of memorable encounters based on narrative, environmental, and gameplay themes. Adjustment of predefined quests and open world locations by utilizing NPC uh, setup. Interactive objects, loot, and environment to create a challenging non-linear playthrough with multiple solutions. Close cooperation with the designers, artists, and programmers, of course, and then crafting divergent experiences that cater to all available play styles, proactive suggestions of improvements to gameplay systems and principles. And that's one thing uh, that I've noticed, by the way, with a lot of their job listings, including this one right here with gameplay designer. They're looking for a new gameplay designer for Cyberpunk is they want new ideas. They want innovative ideas. That's exactly what they say uh, for a lot of the daily responsibilities for some of these job listings. They want something that goes above and beyond because, of course, a lot of people considered what they did with Cyberpunk to be underwhelming. And there are things, don't get me wrong, that I absolutely love about Cyberpunk. Uh, but there's also, you know, some big mishaps that did happen uh, with this game for sure. Now, we have another headline here. This one comes from Bloomberg. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about it. It says, Activist investor wants heads to roll after 6.2 billion cyberpunk fiasco. And this is really serious. Uh, there is a pretty big um, investment firm, I guess you would say, that invested in Cyberpunk 2077. I guess it was a lot of money and they did not get the return on their investment and they are very upset. They want things to change uh, in the CD Projekt Red landscape, I guess you would say. So uh, they go on to say this, UK-based Aubrey Advisors, which didn't specify how big a stake it holds in CD Projekt, wrote to the studio's board expressing utter dismay and disbelief with the developments at the company over the last 12 months on behalf of all shareholders. Furthermore, they went on to say the following, uh, nearly half a year later after repeated fixes and apologies by CD Projekt, as well as hacking incident, which delayed work, the game still hasn't been reinstated by Sony. Since Cyberpunk's debut, debut excuse me, the studio stock has lost 57%, erasing 22.6 billion xylotes, I don't know how to say that, uh, which is $6.2 billion in value. Now they go on to say this, I don't think you could have intentionally tried to make so many mistakes as these guys have made. Aubrey's chief executive officer, Jeffrey Terman, said in an interview, it's really shocking. So investors right now are not happy at all. Furthermore, he says the following, he said he'd solicit another uh, excuse me, solicit other shareholders to replace the supervisor board unless CEO Adam Kaczynski and his deputy uh, Marcin Iwinski are recalled immediately. Aubrey, which doesn't disclose its shareholdings to Bloomberg or any other data providers, is adding to its CD project position and isn't shorting the stock according to Termin. Pushing through changes at CD projects is set to be a difficult task. The company's bylaws specify that a three-fifth majority among shareholders is required to remove supervisory board members. However, again, they're requesting restructuring here uh, with these board members and, you know, things going on at CD Projekt Red. They're actually demanding it. Now, this is interesting. This is where it takes an interesting turn and could actually be good for fans that are following the game and are wanting improvements. Terman says this, this goes on to say this, Terman, who is also the CEO of Slavian sports gear manufacturer LNDOO, wants to know how the studio plans to recover. I would like the company to put forward a public plan as to how it intends to address all of the shortcomings and how it plans from a strategic perspective to repair its brand and trust that's been lost among its client base and its shareholder base. Now, that's actually good news for uh, fans, in my opinion, because that's going to put pressure on CD Projekt Red to come up with a legit plan and perhaps flesh out that plan and give that to the public, which, of course, it would seem like it would be for the fans, but honestly, it would be for investors that are really demanding answers. But I think a lot of us, we have seen the roadmap for Cyberpunk 2077. That has been entirely underwhelming. 
So we want it fleshed out and as the investors do. And I think it's uh, kind of good that investors are push, pushing for a more fleshed out plan and roadmap in the future. Now, it is time to go over your top comments. Remember, leave a comment down below. It could end up right here in a future video. Let's do this. What was the most recent cyberpunk video you ask? It was this one right here. It says, Cyberpunk's new leak reveals what the game could have been. What a shame, new updates. And I highlight that there was a recent leak, if I can find it here, showcasing, here we are, the third person gameplay, alpha gameplay, I should say, from Cyberpunk 2077 in 2013. So apparently it was gonna have a third person view, which is really disappointing. Uh, I would have loved for a fully fleshed out third person view, much like The Witcher 3 had. But anyway, this is what you guys had to say about it. Sensei says, devs shouldn't even announce games until they're finished. That way they'd be able to set more realistic release dates and spend that time fine tuning. Yeah, they announced Cyberpunk way too early. And honestly, considering the set it was in, they should have slapped an early access thing on there or delayed it. Uh, now, GB Riker says, Cyberpunk should have been like a Bethesda game. It should have had both free to play and, uh, I'm sorry, first person and third person views. Uh, the more I hear about what this game could have been, the more depressed I get. CD Projekt Red has no excuse for any of this. Yeah, a lot of people feel that one right there. Uh, straight, let's see, Straight Edge Savior says, I actually played this one on my base PS4 the other day for the first time in months. It's not quite as bad as I remember. Seems to run a bit smoother and the graphics are improved. Still a long way off from being acceptable though, considering they spent the entire PS4 life cycle developing this game. Yeah, uh, you know, it seems like Sony isn't impressed with it. They haven't put the game back on the storefront either. So yeah, uh, Mayuna says this, cheaper to do first person that is to do third. Don't have to show shadows or any anatomy details such as skin texture or muscle movements. Personally, I have given up on this game. True, they got my money from buying this game, but it was my first and last purchase for any CD Projekt red game a lot of you guys upvoting that one so yeah they have um some trust issues <laughs> that they have developed with the community for sure and they need to rebuild that trust it's going to be uh quite the challenge for them to do so so yeah we'll see what happens you know uh they're scaling back the multiplayer stuff that they were planning on doing i think that's at least good news there and i think from the job listings it's good to know that they're looking for uh, new talent in the open world area of the game fleshing that out so there's that's at least that's something but yeah a lot of good things happening here and a lot of bad things so it's like a mosh bit of uh news today for cyberpunk for sure but thank you all so much for watching stay tuned for more cyberpunk 277 news and updates i promise to stay on this one for you all and then of course remember e3 is uh upon us nearly upon us here we will be getting e3 june 12th i will be covering a lot of the stuff out of that one we should be getting some super exciting stuff from e3 2021 so stay tuned for that but thank you so much for watching and i will see you all next time take care